Hi, I'm Tarun Kapoor. And I'm Yuta Shimamoto. We would like to tell you about our work on the micromechanics of the metaphase spindle that we have done in collaboration with Albert Liebschaber, Yusuke Maeda, and Shinichi Ishiwara. The metaphase spindle is a micron-sized football-shaped structure that is assembled in a dividing cell to equally partition replicated DNA between its two daughters. Mistakes in this process are catastrophic and have been linked to disease. To segregate chromosomes properly, the metaphase spindle has to generate forces. Microtubules, which are polymers of the protein tubulin, provide the mechanical framework for this purpose. The metaphase spindle is also subjected to many different forces. For example, microtubules pull chromosomes apart. This results in an equal and opposite force that acts on the spindle. When a chromosome moves from one end of the spindle to its middle, this motion also generates forces that result in deformations in the dense microtubule network of the spindle. And finally, forces act on the spindle to control its position and orientation inside the dividing cell. These forces not only act at different sites within the metaphase spindle and in different directions, they also act on a wide range of time scales. Currently, we do not understand how this structure maintains structural and functional stability in the face of these different forces. Timescales on which forces act is extremely important. To explain this concept, let's go to the lab. What I have prepared is a solution of cornstarch. This solution behaves like a liquid as I gently sweat it in a bowl. If I dip my hand in the solution and rapidly grab it, surprisingly it behaves like a solid. If I stop manipulating it, it once again starts flowing like a liquid. These changes between solid-like and liquid-like behavior can be nicely demonstrated using Mr. Xenopus. It is easy to move him back and forth slowly, but if I move him rapidly on a much faster time scale, the same solution behaves like a solid and the entire ball moves. To show you the real experiment, let's go to the microscopy setup we built. The key component of the setup is a very fine glass needle, which is about 100 times thinner than human hair. This needle can be used to apply nanonewton forces at specific sites within the metaphase spindle, which is about only 40 microns in length. The extent of the bending of this needle can be used to directly estimate force. Two needles are mounted on an inverted microscope, and we can use micro manipulators to control their position and motion. Simultaneously, the responses of the spindle are analyzed by high resolution confocal microscopy. Here you see an image of the spindle in this experiment. The two needles appear as two dark spots. The stiff needle was moved back and forth with a sinusoidal function, as you see in this movie. What you see here is a deformation of the spindle that results from the forces applied by the stiff needle. The position of the stiff and the flexible needles are analyzed to determine the micromechanical property of the spindle. Based on these analyses, we find that the spindle is solid-like on slow time scales, becomes more liquid-like on intermediate time scales, and again becomes solid-like on faster time scales. These findings help us understand how the spindle responds to different forces and maintains structural and functional stability. For example, our data tells us how the spindle accommodates chromosome movement without breaking. It turns out that the velocity at which a chromosome typically moves from one end of the structure to its middle matches the timescale on which the spindle is most liquid-like. On this timescale, the spindle's dense microtubular array remodels efficiently in a way that deformations have a minimal effect on the overall integrity of the structure. We believe that our findings are likely to be relevant for other cytoskeletal architectures, such as those in neurons. Like the spindle, these structures may also allow transport of cargoes at velocities, at which these microtubule-based structures behave more like a liquid than a solid. Thank you so much for watching. 